Hi guys, this is part three of my pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum videos for my third son. So I'm um, just going to continue on. Um, this is after I filmed, so um, I look different than the next clip, but um, this is postpartum and what happened during my postpartum. Um, so just continue watching. I was getting ready to be transferred to uh, postpartum and they had brought the wheelchair in and I needed to go use the restroom before I went and um, I sat up in my bed and had the biggest headache of my life. It was, um, I guess they asked me on a scale of 1 to 10 what it was, and I said it was a 12. It was beyond a 10. It was the worst headache of my life. And I was on the pot. I was shaking, and um, I was in a lot of pain. And the poor, the poor nurse, she was like, you know, trying to get me over to postpartum as fast as she could. Because really there wasn't, you know, anything that she could do because I had already been transferred to postpartum. So she just got me over there as fast as can be. And uh, I had the greatest nurse. Um, I forget what his name was. But um, he was a male nurse and he, um, he was very knowledgeable. And... Um, he said that it could be a couple different things that we just had to figure it out basically and I felt better laying flat so that kind of um, gave him an idea in his head that it was a spinal headache and so um, typically you don't get that um, if you have a vaginal delivery it's Usually, um, whenever you have a um, spinal tap, but, um, and he said that, you know, it's common for mothers after they get out of the hospital to develop a spinal headache, so um, that is, that's what I had. I just had a spinal headache. Well, I shouldn't say just a spinal headache because I was it was really bad and it made my postpartum experience kind of icky I couldn't really sit up that much I did kind of just lay flat and drink lots of pop never in my life has a nurse delivered so much pop to my room I mean like so much pop and uh, it's not like it's not good to drink pop with a heart condition either so it was kind of like I don't know probably not the best but um, yeah I um, drank a lot of pop laid flat and I kind of started feeling better um, the towards the second day I had to stay in the hospital a little bit longer than um, typically. It wasn't because of my son and his cleft. He did fantastic. He ate great. He um, actually right after delivery I was able to latch him on which um, kids with clefts and cleft palates they don't have that section so they can't uh, they can't breastfeed because they don't have the suction power to to latch <coughs> but he tried so hard of course you're not producing that much milk anyways after delivery so I was pumping and I wasn't getting much colostrum or anything like that and um, he um, got fed formula which we was okay with that we kind of went into delivery and stuff like that, just expecting to do both 
formula and breast milk because we just wanted him to be, I guess, thrive as best that he could. And so he was in the nursery for a lot during my postpartum time because of me not really being able to, um, I guess, um, take care of him. Not really like take care of him, but I was dealing with my own stuff, I guess. And um, so the nursery, they really loved him. They, you know, got lots of attention and um, we were able to go home after uh, the second day and I thankfully got hospital pictures and they turned out so great which um, with my daughter I was able to take my own and this time around I couldn't do that because I wasn't able to uh, be up and around so um, I, well, I got home and um, my spinal had I thought that my spinal headache was gone and turns out that day two of being home it came back and I was in a lot of pain and my hormones were start trying to balance out and I was just having a hard time I was in a lot of pain and I just wanted to take care of my baby and our local hospital um, really like since I delivered at a different hospital a bigger hospital um, they really didn't know what to do with me I called them and told them the situation and I called up to the bigger hospital and told them the situation. I was just kind of in limbo and nobody knew what to do with me. And uh, They said to go to the ER, which I really didn't want to go to the ER. I had a bad experience with my, um, after my first in the ER. Um, I was, I had got a flu shot. Um, whenever I was leaving the hospital and I mistaked my flu-like symptoms for an infection after delivery. I was a first-time mom and I had no idea and so I went into the ER thinking I had an infection because I had got um, a lot of, I had got an episiotomy um, so I had a lot of stitches and I just thought that I had an infection and I um, got to the ER and um, I couldn't do a um, urine sample for them. So I was, you know, two days, three days postpartum and um, I didn't really have any control over, um, over that. So um, they was trying to calf me and yeah that didn't I don't know what they was thinking and we really I guess trusted trusted in them and I was in a lot of pain and after trying the third time they, um, my husband finally spoke up and he said, that's enough. And they're like, oh, well, I guess we could do a ultrasound. And I'm not exactly sure what they was looking for. Maybe like a urinary tract infection, bladder infection. I have no idea. But, um, was it necessary? <laughs> it was painful. And I was like... I don't know. I, I guess getting off the subject, you wish that there was a um, kind of like in a postpartum ER um, urgent care situation where you could go after 
delivery after you, you know, go home and stuff. And there's actually a OB that can take care of whatever you need, like in an ER setting, which really isn't the case. And um, I guess stemming from that experience the first time around, I kind of didn't want to go to the ER. And um, our local ER, I had asked them if, because uh, they thought that they would have to give me a um, blood patch. Is that what it's called? Yeah, a blood patch, um, which is basically kind of like a epidural um, using your blood. It like patches the hole in your spinal cord. But our local hospital, they didn't do that. So I would have to go to the big hospital to get that done. And I didn't want to leave my baby because I wasn't going to take my baby into the ER. My husband, he wouldn't uh, be allowed to be in the ER with me. So it was just, I didn't want, I didn't want to go to the ER. I was desperate for a, I was desperate for relief, and, um, yeah, I just sucked it up for a couple more days, and it finally went away. Oh, I was so thankful. It finally went away. And then, um, it was day seven, postpartum. I was feeling kind of funny. I didn't really feel right. So, like my, I could feel my heartbeat in my neck. And so, I took my blood pressure because I thought that my, I was like, there's something up with my heart rate. And um, my blood pressure came back at 178 over like 90 something. I was like, wait, that's not right. I was like, there's something, there's something wrong with the blood pressure cup. So I took it again and, um, it was like still in, like, it was like in the one eighties and, um, I was like, oh, well now I have high blood pressure, it's like postpartum high blood pressure. It's like, great, now I'm going to have to go to the ER. <laughs> uh, I called uh, my OB and explained to her what was going on. And she said um, that um, to keep on checking it and to go to the ER if, you know, it continued didn't go down and so I really didn't want to go to the ER so I didn't and um, I kept on checking it and it did like it did go down and um, yeah um, it was late whenever it happened and I just wanted to wait until the morning to see like how it was. And I got a appointment with my um, just general doctor and um, I was able to get some blood pressure medicine. So I took some blood pressure medicine for a couple days and then it kind of balanced out and my blood pressure wasn't like completely back to where it was, you know, during pregnancy or even before that, but, um, I kind of, I guess, chalked it up to that I weighed more than what I used to and that that, I guess, affects my blood pressure differently. So, right now it's, Probably like stays high 120s, 
uh, to the low 140s. So that's where I am at right now. Like, oh, I'm nine months postpartum. Which, do you think you can still count yourself as postpartum, like, after a while? I don't know. Uh, but my son is nine months old. And he's doing great. He's had his lip repaired. And he's been doing great. He's a strong little guy. And we love him so much. And, uh, yeah, that is a very long pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. Puppy. <laughs> 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 Look at you. You're so cute. <laughs> she does look like Carson. Aww. Ray got you. Ray got you. Don't worry. Yes, we Just go away. You don't want to know me.